a series of namings at Baruch College, which we will consider as a group. Let's see here. David yes. Chanted? Yes, thank you. Hi. Uh, Hi. I believe I'm. I'm actually. This is the first time I've had to present on behalf of the college in this particular regard. So I. I presume all the supporting documentation is. is yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. We've you received it and we've read it. Excellent. Okay. So. Um, uh, most of what is uh, here to be named are uh, relatively recent gifts to the college that represent, um, mostly represent uh, classroom and space naming opportunities. There are a couple, the first two on the agenda, which are older items which uh, we, uh, in, in doing our inventory and cleanup, realized had never been presented to the, to the board for uh, approval and consideration. Okay. You can just uh, read through the 10 and, sure. and uh, just so that they're in the records, officially in the records. Absolutely. Um, okay. Number one is resolution uh, regarding the naming of the Lawrence and Carol Zicklin Chair in Corporate Integrity and Governance. Uh, resolution regarding the naming of the William F. Aldinger III Chair in Banking and Finance. Uh, resolution regarding the naming of the Betty and Marvin Levine Planter and the Sarah and Louis Levine Planter. Uh, resolution regarding the naming of the Catherine, Catherine Garrity and John Griffinetti classroom. Resolution regarding the naming of the Arlene and Bernard Richards classroom. Resolution regarding the naming of the Ruth and Sam Harrelson Hillel Suite. Resolution regarding the naming of the Warren Breslow uh, class of 65 classroom. Resolution regarding the naming of the Pergola Sustainable classroom for real estate education. Resolution regarding uh, the naming of the Nathan Adler class of 60 classroom and resolution regarding the naming of the Alan G. Aronson Department of Marketing and International Business. Thank you. Uh, may I have a vote and call for a vote of approval? So moved, Madam Chair. Second? Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstention, the motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> may I ask Marilyn Hoskin, Dean of the Department of Social Science, to present items 1B11, the naming of, on, of an at Honor Center at City College. Thank you, Madam Chair. This again is a naming opportunity. The law firm of Skadden, Arb, Slate, <coughs> uh, Mager, and Plum has uh, provided a gift for the development of a law, an Honor Center in Legal Studies at City College, a uh, center to be uh, renovated and uh, completed uh, early in the semester uh, with the name of the firm supporting it on it. Thank you. May I have a vote of approval? So moved, Madam Chair. Second. Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? The motion carries. Thank you very much. President Jennifer Robb, you present 1B12. Thank you very much for your consideration. This is a motion to create the Julia Lathrow uh, Professor of Child Welfare at Hunter College. Um, Ms. Lathrow was a social worker with groundbreaking work in the early 1900s. And this chair is created to honor the work of one of our social work faculty who is consistently contributing to the advancement of the child welfare agenda. Um, we have raised discretionary money that we will be allocating to support um, the expenses of this chair. And we are proposing that Dr. Gary Mallon, a national expert in child welfare, somebody who's been consistently called upon to work on national issues such as family reunification after Katrina, um, and LBGT adoption issues be the first um, holder of the Julia Lathrop chair. Thank you very much. May I have a motion for approval? So moved, Madam Chair. Second. Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. I, I just have a question. Oh, uh, will, there, will there be a, um, will there be some type of a <coughs> ceremony or something at the school? Um, at, yes, we usually, this? we often will wait, do a few named chairs at the same time, so we're uh, about to think about who's coming up and plan one. So are we inviting you? Yes. <laughs> well, no, I love, we, we love to, our social workers are very excited to have a social worker on the board. So <laughs> you were, you are always welcome and I'm glad that you brought that up and okay. we will let you know. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been moved and a, a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? The motion carries. Thank you very much. Dean Mogulusev, school. Mogulescu. Mogulescu. I always call it. <laughs> That's okay. Correctly, I have it on the question. Right. Uh, the establishment of the CUNY School of Professional Studies Foundation is a, a natural and necessary uh, result of our growth and success. 
Um, the foundation will encourage giving to the school as well as provide the structure and support required for administering gifts and contributions. Funds raised by the foundation will support and advance the educational research activities of the school and expand our capacity to offer scholarships to our students. Congratulations. May I have a motion for approval? So moved, Madam Chair. Second. Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. I have a question. Question. The, um, who will, once we approve this, then um, who will constitute the foundation? We, we have Since a, usually we use alums right. to right. constitute have, our foundation. We have an, an initial uh, board of, of three people. Mm -hmm. um, one is indeed an alum, and I think a very distinguished one, uh, uh, Phil, and, and another is a, not an alum, uh, um, and then we will be expanding more as we go forward. Who is that alum? Uh, Bob Kassain. Bob Kassain, yeah. Great idea. It's a really great idea. Congratulations on the effort. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstention? The motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chancellor Schaefer. Thank you. Um, it has long been the uh, policy of this university to uh, mandate a periodic review of our faculty and to provide them with guidance as to how they're doing along the path uh, towards tenure. Uh, that policy and some of the procedures are uh, embodied <coughs> in resolutions passed by the Board of Trustees. Uh, other procedures are set forth uh, in the collective bargaining agreement with our uh, faculty union. It sometimes happens, however, that faculty members either don't or feel that they don't get uh, sufficiently detailed guidance and uh, when they come up for tenure, uh, are uh, you believe that they they were not given sufficient warning as to what might might come, and uh, a number of campuses over the years have developed a, a very <coughs> sound practice of somewhere around the middle uh, of that process uh, having uh, a dean or uh, other appropriate academic administrator uh, look at faculty files and review them with the department chairs to see that the paper record that exists in the files reflects uh, the reality of the situation. Uh, department chairs being human, sometimes it's a little hard to give a tough review uh, to a colleague who you work with every day. Um, for that and other reasons, uh, it occasionally happens that the the, the file really doesn't reflect the reality. And so uh, this is a, uh, a resolution to uh, spread to all of the campuses uh, that uh, salutary uh, practice of having uh, this pre-tenure review uh, somewhere about the middle of the process uh, so that uh, another pair of eyes looks at the file, talks to the department chair, and then in turn, uh, produces a, a written report for the individual faculty member to make sure that that faculty member uh, has a, a fair and a clear understanding of where he or she is uh, in, the, in the path towards tenure. Um, and so um, we, we think uh, we've vetted this with the, the campuses, we've talked to, to uh, faculty representatives, um, and I think everybody agrees that this is a good thing uh, it not only uh, solves occasional problems, but more importantly, <coughs> it, it provides a, an element of guidance and fairness to faculty members, uh, which I think is important to all of us. Uh, so um, that's, the, uh, that's the proposal. Thank you. Professor Bernhardt? Yeah, I um, would just like to um, add a little bit to that. I mean, I uh, personally, any, anyhow, largely concur with uh, Rick's remarks about this policy. Um, having um, been a grievance counselor for some time, I've seen this kind of miscommunication quite often where candidates are not advised adequately in regard to the progress they're making and do, in fact, then suffer some rather unpleasant surprises when they reach the, uh, the tenure stage. Um, I do think, though, that uh, one thing that um, one concern that has surfaced and um, been communicated to me by faculty <coughs> is um, a concern, well, I think it, it comes in two forms. One is uh, an additional letter in one's file. Uh, and I think the more letters in one's file, the more nervous people tend to get. 
Um, the other is uh, the concern that uh, a, uh, a, a dean perhaps mis misused the process because I think the way your policy is written, it is aimed at assessing the kind of guidance that's being given to the candidate. Um, but it is possible. Uh, I don't know whether or how one exactly forecloses this possibility, but it is possible that one could end up with deans who are not uh, expert in the field of the particular candidate making assessments of publications and things like that. And I think this, um, you know, rather concerns some faculty members. Uh, so I thought I'd make those known, uh, although I myself feel that this actually is an advance in the sense that it adds a check and balance uh, to a process that sometimes really needs one. If I might respond, I think those are two very uh, good points. Um, I think in the majority of cases, perhaps the vast majority of cases, uh, the department chair has done uh, a competent and adequate job. The paper record reflects uh, what has gone on and that guidance has been adequate. Um, and this really should uh, add very little uh, uh, other than an acknowledgement uh, in, yes, another piece of paper in the file, but an acknowledgement that uh, uh, a sort of a summary of the process to date uh, which really won't contain very much new information. And then in other cases it will, but that's because it should. With respect to the involvement of the deans, I know there's been, we've had some conversation about that. Of course, in all of our campuses, the process for promotion and tenure eventually gets to levels beyond the department uh, where faculty members who are involved may not uh, be as expert in that particular field, and yet they, they do have a say and it's better for the faculty member to find out uh, how <coughs> someone outside the field might view uh, the record uh, uh, before it's too late. Um, but I also think that deans being, um, uh, I think, experienced at this would tend to rely on the department chair and the questioning would not be so much what do I think uh, uh, about this person's scholarship, but to press the department chair, what do you think about this person's scholarship? What are other people in your department? And then test whether those answers are consistent with what the re written record reflects uh, to date. And, and uh, w we would hope and I expect uh, that presidents and provosts who are pretty experienced at these things will convey to their deans that that's <coughs> really the purpose of this review. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? There being none, may I have a motion for approval? So moved, Madam Chair. Second? <coughs> it's been moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? The motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> the final item on our revised agenda is the university's <coughs> campus and workplace violence policy, which will be presented by Vice <coughs> Chancellor Waters. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Item 1B15 is a resolution to adopt a new workplace violence policy in accordance with New York State's workplace violence prevention law and the Public Employee Safety and Health Agency's regulations. The policy we will consider today supersedes and replaces the one adopted by the Board of Trustees in 2004. The policy defines workplace violence as any physical assault or acts of aggressive behavior occurring where an employee performs any work-related duty in the course of his or her employment. This revised policy requires each college to conduct a risk assessment and to develop a campus-specific workplace violence prevention program. State regulations require that authorized employee representatives participate in various aspects of the program, including the risk assessment. We are working with the unions on this. The policy also mandates annual training in workplace violence prevention for every university employee in compliance with the, press reg with the PESH regulations. Madam Chair, I present item uh, 1B15 for, your, for the committee's approval. Any questions, comments? There being none, may I have a motion for approval? So moved, Madam Chair. Second? Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Opposed Ab abstentions. abstentions. <laughs> Madam Chair. <laughs> Rain freeze. Rain freeze. Um, <laughs> opposed <laughs> abstentions. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, report of the Vice Chancellor. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to note for the committee's information, there has been there is one bylaw waiver that will appear in the Chancellor University report for one research associate at CCNY, and there is another for an assistant to HEO at Lehman College. There's also a search waiver for an assistant to HEO at Lehman College. Madam Chair, I'd also like to take this opportunity to update the committee on the efforts of my office and the university to become more efficient by centralizing <coughs> payroll operations. Uh, in December, we opened our first centralized payroll operation at a satellite office at Metrotech in space provided by Megar Evers College. Currently, that location handles full-time payroll <coughs> operations for the Brooklyn Senior Colleges, and in March, part-time payroll functions will also move there. Early reports on the new centralized operations have been very favorable. This summer, we plan to proceed to the next phase of payroll centralization when we occupy newly leased space at 395 Hudson Street. Our goal there is to centralize payroll operations for all of the Manhattan senior colleges. We're currently seeking space for future phases that will include the Queens and the Bronx as well as the community colleges. On a second note, I would like the board to know that we have begun work on a comprehensive study of diversity in CUNY. At our April meeting, Dean Jennifer Rubain, the University Dean for Diversity, will make a presentation on and a progress report on that study as it goes forward. I just wanted to give those bits of information to the committee. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Mm. Comments? No, great report. Thank you. I'm glad that Thank we were uh, moving forward with that study. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, there being none, may I have a motion for adjournment? So moved in. And second, moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Good evening. Thank you very much. Good meeting. <laughs>